Welcome to The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi, where we embark on a journey of per personal growth, wellness, and empowerment. Join me, Stacey Chalemi, as we explore insightful tips, and we, and we also go into actionable sites where we elevate ways in your life and let you see the, your life in a whole new stand. And now today, Claire, who is a spiritual coach and works in astrology and helps people in their daily lives improve themselves through the different ways of astrology and other related um, areas that she studies. She's going to talk about how you can use your birth chart to actually help you in your personal empowerment that in your life. So she's going to talk a little bit about today how you could actually take your birth sign and you could actually apply it to astrology and how that actually could help you in your personal growth. So Claire, today I'm really excited because this is something I think a lot of people are interested in. You know, a lot of people really want to be able to be personally empowered, but they don't know how to, you know, use their astro you know, their birth sign. They don't know how to apply, you know, they're interested in, in astrology, but they think it's just like a horoscope and, then, and they don't realize how much more goes into it. And, you know, a lot of times if you look at astrology and you look at the um, the different uh, birth signs and you look at numerology and everything in that area, it, it, it when you do it with somebody, it actually comes out and it's like, oh my God, that's me to a T, you know? And then there's so many ways you could take it to apply it to your life. So you could actually have personal growth in all different areas of life. So it, it could apply to how can I make my, you know, my, my life more successful in the business world? How could I grow, you know, a healthier bond with my family or improve my personal life or relationships that are around me? And there's so much to dive into. How, how do we use astrology to actually enhance our personal lives and enhance our personal growth? Well, yeah, you know that I definitely just agree with everything you just said, because that's obviously what I do for a living. And I just, I think it's such a powerful tool when you do allow yourself to open your mind to what it's showing you. Something yeah. that I talk about a lot is, you know, the very real kind of obstacles that a lot of people have when they're getting into it or wanting to get into astrology is, you know, is this real? Is it just a a system that a lot of people use to kind of excuse certain behaviors within themselves. There's so much confirmation bias that yeah. is totally true and, and very real with astrology. And I think those are, among other things, some of the main factors that I would say kind of keep people from actually utilizing these tools, because unfortunately it is used in those ways a lot of the time. And I think like many tools, you know, like many things in life, it's about your intentions and how you actually choose to utilize this system. And so for me in, in my work and the way that I like to approach it, I've shared this with you every time we chat, but I just, I think it's for me, it's one of the most valuable ways to utilize this system is by understanding your personal birth chart first and foremost. You know, right. I think to your point with the pop astrology and just viewing it through the lens of, oh, it's just a horoscope. It's mm -hmm. like, that can be super valuable if you know what you're even looking at. Number one, I think a lot of people don't even know what to read where most horoscopes are actually written for your rising sign, not your sun sign. Right. Um, and so a lot of people don't even know their rising sign or what a rising sign is. So I think yeah. that's first and foremost, if you feel like horoscopes have never resonated with you, that's worth looking into, <laughs> number one. Yeah. Um, and then number two, it's like, ultimately, if you don't understand the nuances and the depth and the complexities of every layer of your chart, not just your sun sign, yeah, there's so much more to be learned there. And there's so much more to understand about yourself. I think one of the biggest things that I hear is feedback from people all the time. And I know I had this experience myself and it's why I love to use this system so much is I had things to your point, when I got my chart read, I had things mirrored back to me and articulated to me in a way where they have, they rang so true. They felt so real and so true in my body. And I had never been able to put words to them before, which made it really hard to validate, which made yeah. it really hard to accept, 
which made it really hard to embrace. And I think Mm -hmm. that goes back to what you mentioned earlier, where it's like when you start to kind of see yourself through a new lens and through a more whole lens, you become so much more empowered. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely. Now, what's the difference between uh, a rising star and, and, and a sun and a sun sign? You just mentioned the two different signs. Like you didn't realize, like you mentioned, most people don't realize the difference between the two. What are the different differences between the two? Yeah. So, I mean, just to take a, a small step back, there's so many more layers than just the sun and the rising. I think you maybe, if you're at at least a little bit into astrology, you maybe have heard sun, moon, rising, like the big three. That's what people always talk about all the time. And there's obviously every other planet as well. And I know that the sun and moon aren't planets, but I'm just going to say that for the sake of easier than celestial body. So, (laughs) um, So with that in mind, there are other points of your birth chart, like the rising sign that are not physical objects. They're kind Mm -hmm. of these mathematical points in space that are meant to be very important, very prominent within your character and the way that you kind of present or whatever it may be. Like they're going to show up in your personality, essentially. Mm -hmm. So the rising sign is one of those. And without getting too, you know, nuanced and into the details, this is why the time and the location of your birth matter, not just the day and the year of your birth day. Because it's essentially, it's saying what sign, what constellation was rising over the Eastern horizon in relation to you on earth at the time of your birth, it was rising. So that's essentially where that term comes from. It's also a synonym to ascendant. If you ever hear people say ascendant in astrology or just your first house, that's what this is speaking to. And in terms of like real time, what it actually means, I think this is where it's so nuanced, so complex, but like the most basic way of putting it is your sun sign is the core of who you are. It is who you are at your most authentic in your bones, essentially, you know, it's like, you can't help but be this. Let's just put it that way. Your rising sign is more so how you are kind of choosing to approach your life at the overarching level. It's how you're choosing to move through the world, how you kind of view new experiences the I always think of it as kind of like the lens the 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 lens that you are viewing the world through and that oftentimes at least upon first impressions or like surface level relationships that's how people are seeing you as well so this is why a lot of people when they find out their rising sign they actually really really resonate with this because they're like oh yes this is how I want to be this is who I'm kind of This is a part of my personality that I'm growing into or that I've kind of shaped the way that I move through the world through. Yeah. Wow. Now, you know, when it comes to like um, personal empowerment, how can we use astrology to increase our personal empowerment? Oh my gosh. I mean, so many ways, first of all, I think this is one that's like, there's a lot of different angles kind of to what you were mentioning earlier, where it's like, the beauty of astrology or one of the beauties of astrology is you can kind of apply it to whatever you're personally going through in that moment of your life. Um, But if we're looking at it in kind of just the overarching, I want to feel more empowered. I want to feel more like myself. I want to kind of reclaim parts of myself that I've allowed to diminish or that I've given away from through people pleasing or through fear of rejection or whatever it may be. Um, And there's, I think there's a lot of different ways that we can do this, but first and foremost, I would say getting your chart read by someone else is one of the most powerful things (laughs) to introduce you to this system, just because I, I will say this a million times, but it's all about seeing your wholeness. It's not about seeing these different kind of siloed compartments that make you up. It's about recognizing that they all play together. There's mm-hmm. there's pros and cons. You know, there's there's different points of the spectrum for each of them. That's kind of how I always talk about it. I don't know, we've had parts of that conversation before, but like, I think that every single placement in your birth chart can show you your potentials. And that means your highest potential, you know, the, the version of it, you probably are most inclined to want to play out 
It also is going to show you the potential on like the really challenging, most, you know, quote unquote, objectively negative side of the spectrum as well. Yeah. And to me, that's actually extremely empowering because it's showing you, number one, this is why you're behaving this way. This is yeah. why certain things are coming up. It's not to excuse it. It's not a permission slip, but it's allowing you to give yourself a little bit more grace. Yeah. And to recognize that every single person is human at the end of the day. And we we all have the potential to play out both ends of the spectrum. So it's showing you, hey, if this is the side that you tend to be playing out more, here's the other end of that spectrum. And yeah. here are some ways that you can probably get closer to playing that out versus this, because it's showing you the context of why it's showing up, where it's showing up, when it's showing up, all of those details. So it, to me, it, it really, if you understand your personal birth chart, it really is this ability to go from having self-awareness to taking it to that next step and really being able to actually do something about it. Right. Wow. So, so the first thing you would suggest is getting someone who is an expert in reading astrology to look at your birth chart, to look at your, your rising and your sun sign and, and to really do a, a, a analyzation of everything, you know, take into all different factors. So they take into your, your factor of when you were born, mm -hmm. your rising, your rising, um, sign that your, 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 um, moon sign, was it your, um, so they'll take in when you were born. So like the day, year, like all of the details of your actual just birthday, but also the time of day and the location. So like for me, Charlotte, North Carolina, for example, like it's going to tell you where. So that's the information you provide, but then it's going to be able to generate a chart that'll show your sun, your moon, your rising and every single planet where they were in the sky at the exact time of day that you were born in relation wow. to where you were on earth when you were born. Wow. Wow. And so once you start analyzing all that and you start looking at that, it really, it starts to really form who you are as a person in all different areas of your life. It's your personality, your characteristics, the way you think, the way you, you like to do things. And then, you know, it comes up with this whole analyzation of, of the person that, by the way, everything, you know, formulated around the time that you came into this earth, this is the way that, you know, your personality, your sign, your, you know, you're supposed to be. So, you know, if someone is off track, you know, or isn't, you know, is that, do you think that affects a person negatively or it might be a good thing? So if, if, the, if their chart says you're supposed to be a certain way and then you're not really you you know, some things resonate, but some things you're kind of doing differently. Is it, it's a, is it something you, you should look at seriously and, and maybe try to readjust certain, th certain things in your life or sometimes could it be a good thing or maybe not? I think that's a great question. And I want to just say right now, I think this is one of the biggest fears that a lot of people have with astrology. They think it's faded. They think that it's rigid and set in stone and black and white and you either are this or you're not and that's just back to the spectrums like that just couldn't be further from the truth it's really showing you hey here's a here's a picture of a lot of different potentials that could be playing out right now yeah. and i think i had that exact experience that you're speaking to like when i first got my chart read i was in the very early stages of what I didn't know then, but I can clearly say now was a quarter life crisis. I was having a full blown existential crisis or about to, hence yeah. why I was like, sure, let's look at astrology. <laughs> like, tell me something about myself because I have no idea who I am. Right. And I felt so validated, more validated than I ever had in my entire life in some parts of that. But to your point, there were other parts that I wasn't necessarily playing out the way that my chart said I would or that I quite frankly wanted to be. And I think that actually for me personally, it it gave me this um it gave me this confirmation that the parts of my life that were feeling really uncomfortable were feeling that way for a reason. I had I had gotten into or I had started playing these roles. I had leaned a little too hard into my conditioning and into expectations and into what people expected and wanted from me or into people pleasing or 
whatever it may be, or or maybe I think in my case for sure, and I know a lot of people have this experience, maybe playing out an end of the spectrum that might be beneficial in some ways, yeah. but it wasn't aligned with what I actually wanted in my life. It's like, well, I'm checking that box and it's not inherently good or bad that I am, but like, do I actually want that? Right. And I think that's more what comes up. I would say don't ever probably go into a reading with the intention of, you know, getting news that's going to like confirm that you're living your right, your life in a right or wrong way. Right. Go into it with curiosity so that you're going to really start to think about whatever is offered to you. You're going to feel into it. You're going to sit with it and recognize that there is probably some truth to it, but is it the truth that I want to be living out? And I think that's the experience that I personally had. I know a lot of clients that I work with have. And to me, that is a step towards empowerment because you're actively choosing which which end of the spectrum, which characteristics within my chart do I want to be playing out more and which ones do I want to be playing out a little bit less? Right. Wow. Yeah. Because, you know, I think that could kind of help you when you look at like when you look at it in that aspect, it's like, OK, um, you know, these are just certain characteristics that I really like about myself. And then there are certain things that, you know, that it says that I am and I but you know what, I, I'm not really happy with those things. And maybe I want to change, you know, some of those things and alter it. Now, are we, you know, is, is it totally OK to alter it? Because if it says, you know, you're supposed to be this, this or you're supposed to be doing that way and someone's personality might not want it like that. Also, could they be on the spectrum, too? Because sometimes people are on like, you know, the spectrum of both signs. You know, they might be a little bit of this and they might be a little bit of that. And that probably could affect them in lots of ways, too. It does. I've read a lot of different charts at this point, and I've read both where they've been very concentrated in a couple signs and a couple houses. And there is like just super clear and strong themes within people's charts when it's just clustered. The planets in the sky on the day they were born were all kind of in the same place. Right. And those people tend to be very definitive <laughs> in their personalities. I don't know. I don't want to say they can't change. I don't want to say they can't grow and evolve. That's absolutely not true at all. But just the way that they are is very prominent because it's so concentrated in certain parts of their charts and in certain signs. I've also seen charts that are totally spread out where to your point that you just made, there's a lot of kind of seesawing push pull energy within them internally and that can feel very challenging I know this is my chart is one of those <laughs> and that can be very challenging because you have these not always opposing energies within you per se but these kind of conflicting energies where it can create this internal friction where one part of you wants to do something and another part of you which is also just as real has this very different kind of feeling around how to approach a situation. And I think a lot of us have that, you know, we're all humans. <laughs> we're all very complex creatures. Um, but I think that that goes back to what we were just saying of, okay, if there is a part of my chart that feels like maybe more of a, more of a nuisance than a benefit, which, you know, yeah. I challenge you to look at it in a different way if that's how it feels. Um mm -hmm. That said, you're totally allowed to have your least favorite and favorite placements within your chart. I know I do. And yeah. <laughs> it's recognizing like, okay, for me, for example, my cancer Mars, I don't, I don't love that I have Mars and cancer. It does make it really challenging. Like Mars is a planet that speaks to the way that you're going to assert yourself, the way that you're going to feel motivation to take action. And Cancer is one of the most fluid, if not the most fluid, intuitive of the signs. And it's literally just my motivation levels, my energy levels, my ability and desire to actually speak up and say what I want mm -hmm. ebbs and flows literally every single day. I mean, it's cancer. It's ruled by the moon. I, I have to look at where the moon is every day, even though my sun and moon aren't there my Mars yeah. is. So it's like, am I actually going to have the energy and motivation to do this task that needs to get done today? Right. I need to see where it's at. So I bring that up because that can be a challenge, but I also have some other placements in my chart. 
I have a 10th house Saturn. So yeah. that's basically like Saturn speaks to your work ethic, your ability to take accountability and take on responsibility and step up to the plate. 10th house is all about goal setting, long-term goals, success, achievement, like status, yeah. um, the legacy you want to leave. So it's, it's like, okay, if I know that I have both of these energies in my chart, I want to honor both of them. I don't want to yeah. disregard the fact that my energy and motivation will ebb and flow, but yeah. I also know that when I need to, I can lean into this other side of myself. And I think that's really back to the empowerment. That's really how you can, the more you know your chart, the more you can play with those parts of, okay, this is what's going to activate this side of my yeah. chart today. Cause that's the side I actually want to be tapping into since I need to get some work done. And how do you know how to tap into it? Because everything changes on a daily basis. Like if you read horoscopes, your horoscope is different the next day. And mm -hmm. it's because of the way everything is aligned. You know, how do you, how do you learn how to understand the differences and, and read your chart, you know, according to the each day, you know, what are things that you look at when it comes to astrology, you know, because every day is different. Right. And this is where I think that my way of using these tools is a little bit different than most astrologers, uh, which is honestly one of the reasons that I don't even call myself an astrologer. Like, I think I just use astrology and I'm adept at it. <laughs> I don't technically call myself an astrologer, but I personally think it is so much more important if you're wanting to use astrology as a tool for empowerment, as a tool to, you know, kind of use self-discovery as your ability to be more authentic and live a life that feels more aligned with you. If that's the way that you're wanting to use astrology, I think it is far more beneficial to learn your personal birth chart in and out versus mm -hmm. leaning into the transits. Because mm -hmm. the reality is exactly what you just said. It changes every single day. <laughs> the transits, the planets are moving. Whether yeah. we want them to or not, they're moving every single day. Right. And so ultimately, if you know yourself well enough, it doesn't really matter where the planets are on any given day. It can be a helpful added layer to support you. But yeah. if you know yourself in and out, then you know how to operate no matter where the energy is that day, no matter what circumstances externally are happening, you know, planets aside. Yeah. And so I think that can be far more valuable to start with at the very least, where then if you want to fold the transits in after the fact, then it's basically about, okay, how do I take where the planets are today and kind of overlay them on my own birth chart to mm -hmm. see what's getting personally activated for me today based on where the planets are in the sky. Like for example, last week, the full moon in Aries, if you have strong Aries and Libra placements, because when there's a full moon, that means the sun and the moon are in opposite signs. So the moon was full in Aries, which means the sun was in Libra. So if yeah. you have those two signs prominent in your birth chart, you probably felt last week's full moon in a really big way. Right. And and how did a lot of people, like if you were a Libra or Aries, you know, how, what were like some of the things that people were experiencing? Because it was supposed to be very powerful last week the way everything was aligned. Yeah, it. I think it really was mostly because it was the first full moon following an eclipse window. Mm -hmm. um, and anytime we have an eclipse window, just kind of everything gets shaken up. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. things, things go wonky, things go mm -hmm. awry. Um, I always like to quote uh, Kate Fowley, an astrologer who talks about how eclipses expedite the inevitable. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's, Sometimes it's cataclysmic events that change things in the, you know, in a heartbeat, but more often than not, I would say it's usually things that have been bubbling, bubbling, bubbling under the surface, potentially for months or years. And the yeah. eclipses kind of force you to deal with them, whether you want to or not. <laughs> and so I think that that was very prominent for everyone collectively last week because we had this crazy eclipse window in September, early October. And then the Aries full moon was the first big lunation right after that window. So a lot of people just had their whole world shaken up and then they move into like, all right, got to keep moving on with my life. 
And the full moon in Aries was here to illuminate things again and be like, all right, things have changed. You've yeah. changed. We're about to start a whole new cycle with life. Aries is the first sign of the Zodiac. So regardless of where it hits in your personal chart, it is kind of like a, a fresh start type of energy, a new chapter for a full new year long cycle. And it really is asking you like, okay, let's check in. Do you need to leave behind any behaviors, mindsets, maybe even literal circumstances like relationships or careers or whatever it may be that no longer feel like they fit with this version of yourself and your life that you're wanting moving forward? And I think that that's why last week's full moon was just hitting everyone so hard because Aries full moons already do that. That's literally the yeah. theme of an Aries full moon. Yeah. But the fact that it was immediately following an eclipse window that rocked most people's worlds in some way, it just felt extra potent, I think, to really take that as an opportunity to decide what do I want to leave behind that no yeah. longer feels like it fits, even if it once did. Yeah, you know, that's it, it is very powerful. And and I think a lot of people, you know, said that they they felt like some type of change going on in, in, in their life, you know, it's just, uh, kind of like revelations, you know, kind of hitting them, you know, and, uh, I think it's amazing, you know, how astrology is, is, uh, is, is so precise. If you really look into it, it's just so precise. Now, what made you actually go into astrology, you know, and, and go that route, you know, cause I'm sure something in your life had to trigger it. Was it a common interest that you always had, or it was something just pulling you towards that direction? Like what made you, you know, focus on astrology as your lifelong career and how did it change your life? Yeah, it, uh, it was an interesting path and it was not because I wanted to go down it. <laughs> I definitely resisted it more so than uh, just dove in head first. But yeah. once I did, I couldn't get out. So <laughs> the the long and short was, I think like a lot of people, I had that existential crisis moment that I referenced earlier when COVID hit, when we were kind yeah. of forced to slow down forced mm -hmm. to experience our lives in a different way than we were used to. The busyness yeah. kind of just fell off because things just couldn't function the way that they previously were, you know? Right. Yeah. Um, and I think that that had many people on the global scale really noticing things that had been festering under the surface yeah. for a long time but we'd been able to brush past. We'd been able to ignore it. We've been able to compartmentalize it because it just, we didn't have the energy or the capacity yeah. or the desire to deal with it. We just right. kept moving on through our lives. But I had that, I had that realization really early on in COVID. Like I would say it probably only took me a couple months. And then I was like, oh no, <laughs> like trapped here with my thoughts. And I'm realizing that I've been, living my life on autopilot. Like I literally just started working in the corporate world one day and I never stopped and I never questioned anything. And I never thought about myself or my values or where I was heading. And if it still felt good to me. Yeah. And I really just decided to look at every, you know, system, every opportunity that I could, that could potentially help me to figure those things out that I had been neglecting. What did I care about? Who yeah. actually did I want to be? You know, was yeah. this path the one that I wanted to be on? And what right. things do I need to learn about myself to actually know that answer? Yeah. And first of all, let me just say, I had no idea where to look when I started this journey, which is why I landed in the world of astrology. I dabbled in pretty much any corner of self-discovery that yeah. I could until I found a couple that just completely changed my perspective on life and yeah. allowed me to feel like I was starting to know myself again. And there were several, let me be clear, astrology wasn't the only one that did that, but this was really the first one that just busted the door wide open. Yeah, And I felt like I had this kind of key, this map, if you will, of understanding who I was. And I knew that it was something that, that was going to be able to support me for a long time. I think that's one of the coolest things with astrology is yeah. you can go back to it. Same with human design. You can go back to it 
a million different times and see different things. Yeah. You're, you're at a different stage in your life. Me right now is a different person than I was when I was looking at this, you know, five years ago and the right. things that I'm connecting the dots around within my personality now are not the same things that I was deducing when I was looking at it then, because just yeah. see what you need to see in that moment. And it's just continuously allowing me to go deeper and deeper into understanding who I am and back to the empowerment piece, just really being able to then live my life and make choices that align with that. Right. Wow. That is powerful. Now, how do, as a coach, how do you, you know, how do you help people? Like how, when it comes to self-empowerment and it, and, and, you know, and having people understand who they are and then start to actually make changes in their life, you know, what would be, what are some of the things that you would start to do to help people get to that point, to understand who they are and, and what areas in their lives need to be changed and really get people to really discover who they are and then get them to the point where they start really looking at things and, and making changes in their life with the usage of astrology. So first, I think I always like to know what people are wanting advice on in that season of their lives back to what I was just saying about myself and how I look at it now versus then and I know in the yeah. future it will be a different thing so I think that's really important and helpful too because they're going to help to kind of navigate me as the coach as to what area they're needing the most support with right now so that right. we can start to work through that because that's going to give them the capacity then to continue working through other parts of their chart so that's first and foremost. I like to know where you're at in your life, what you're kind of wanting the most guidance around. Yeah. We're going to hyper fixate on those parts of your charts. We're not going to neglect the rest of it, but we're going to see if there's some core kind of themes and patterns that we can look at that are potentially triggers for you. They're potentially challenge points for you. They're potentially wounds that you need to heal self-worth insecurity around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so that I think is a, a really big piece that I like to dive into with my clients. And I, I always think that something that a lot of people can consciously believe and know, but it's harder to apply to yourself, especially depending on some placements in your chart, um, yeah. is that there's a room for self-acceptance and compassion and wanting to still improve and wanting to still evolve and be a quote unquote better version of yourself. Right. I think a lot of people have this idea of like, okay, if I look in my chart and I see that I have a, I'll just use my cancer Mars example. And since I already explained what that was a little bit, like, yeah. oh, I have a cancer Mars. So like, cool. I guess that means I have a past now and I, I don't have to like get work done every day, you know, whatever it may be, like you can use it as this excuse or you can use it as like a victim mentality around that thing. And really what I, I coach my clients around a lot is like, how can we have acceptance and compassion for this part of ourselves and recognize that there's a way to really leverage the highest end of it and not let it rule your life subconsciously right. because oftentimes that's what's happening it's the subconscious parts of our charts that are kind yeah. of leading us astray yeah. um, and I like to look at those pieces and I also like to really look at the parts of our charts on the other end of that spectrum that are just such prominent thematic gifts and strengths within yeah. your chart so you can start to lean into and embrace those more and not feel like you know, you're taking them for granted or yeah. like they're just, everyone has this, you know, it's like, no, they don't actually. And this right. is something that can probably get you a lot further in life if you embrace it a little bit more. Right. Now, is it, are there some tools and techniques that you use when people want like see certain things in their chart and they want to change it? Are there certain tools, you know, in different ways that you teach people that could be helpful, maybe things they could apply in their own lives, you know, to help them, you know, if they're home right now listening and they see certain characteristics, you know, in their, in their life, they want to change. Are there some suggestions that you may be able to give? Yes. And I'll say it's so, it's so nuanced and so specific. Like it, it really is very personalized to the chart, but mm -hmm. I think it goes back to, again, if you're having issues with 
fill in the blank. Like, where is your current biggest challenge in your life? There's going to be certain planets that you're going to want to look at to support you through that or certain houses that you're going to want to look at to support you with that more. So like I was mentioning earlier, if I'm struggling to get things done, if I'm struggling with procrastination, if I'm struggling with motivation, my energy levels with actually just doing things, but I'm like, I have work to do. Like, how can I be a successful human being and actually still honor my energy at the same time? And so like in that example, I, I would look at your Mars. I would look at your Saturn. I would look at your second, sixth and 10th houses. Like there's certain parts of your chart that are going to really be supportive to help you understand what's going to motivate you. Um, right. What is going to actually get you to do this thing that you keep not doing, even though consciously you want to, why right. do you keep repeating this pattern in relationships? Like if that's the case, we're going to look at the seventh house. We're going to look at your Venus. We're going to look at your Mars. We're going to look at your 11th house. There's like spots where we're going to look. And then there's always going to be, to your point, I have, you know, just ways of approaching certain things based on what sign and what planet and what house we're talking about, you know, okay, because of this, maybe you can try doing this because this planet will appreciate your approach if you do it in this way. I get it. Now, when you say house, what does that refer to for people that might not understand what that word means? Yeah. So if you look at, you know, any Western astrology wheel, which is 90% of what you're going to just like, you'd probably have to type in Vedic astrology if you were Googling that specifically. So if you're just on, you know, Astro Cafe or astrology.com or something like that, and you Google your birth chart, They all are going to have slightly different looks, but all of them are going to have kind of different uh, layers in the wheel, in the birth chart wheel. So the outermost layer is always going to speak to the sign. Mm -hmm. So it's usually these, the kind of, you know, the symbols or the glyphs that represent each of the 12 zodiac signs. So those are the signs like we've been talking about. The layer in from that is typically going to be where you have a whole new set of little glyphs, and those are going to represent where the planets fell on the day of your birth. So it's like, okay, there's a lot of, for me, there's a lot of planets in Aquarius. Okay. That means I have a lot of Aquarius energy prominent within my chart and within myself. The innermost circle is then going to have numbers one through 12, kind of denoting these 12 pie slices of your chart, if you will. And Mm -hmm. those are representing the 12 houses. And I always think the easiest way to break down a chart in your mind, because that's a lot of different layers to look at. And I totally get that. It's kind of like learning a language a little bit. And I always tell people, if you're wanting to learn how to read your chart more, it helps to look at the planets as what? Planets equal what? This is what energy we're looking at within your chart. Right. The sign is the next layer that you can apply to it by saying kind of what, what flavor is yeah. this energy going to show up as within myself? What way is this energy going to manifest for me personally? The house is then what area of my life? So where, where yeah. is this most likely to show up for me? Okay. Gotcha. Now, if you had to take everything we talked about today and you really wanted to focus on some important aspects, what are some things that you really like to emphasize on? I think for me, again, just because I don't see a lot of people using astrology this way. And I I really think if you're someone that is intrigued by it and does see the benefit of it, but doesn't necessarily know how to use it or feels daunted by it, mm-hmm. I really personally believe that knowing your personal birth chart is the best place to start, is the best place to deep dive into. Don't get caught up on the transits. Don't get caught up on the aspects even, like how things connect to one another. Like really just understand each individual placement in your chart first and foremost. I do think the best way to do that is to get someone to professionally read it for you first, then feel free to deep dive into it even further. But to me, that is the most beneficial way that you can really approach these systems to find empowerment, to find self-acceptance and self-compassion, to actually leverage your strengths more and become more self-aware of some of these patterns that you might be playing out. And I think then you can always add the other layers 
if and when you want to, to right. continue to support you further. But I think really that is, to me, one of the best ways to use this system that I don't see a lot of people really doing. Maybe because it feels right. daunting, but it's like, just get a chart read then. Not everyone needs yeah. to do this for a living. Just have someone yeah. tell you. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Now, what are some of the services that you provide for people? So now it's going to sound like a plug, but I promise it wasn't. I do. <laughs> I do birth chart readings. Um, I also do human design readings. And basically you get a, a little key takeaway sheet with either of those. So you can have it even after we've spoken live, because I know that a lot of times you need that kind of reference point. So you have yeah. that, but you also are going to get an hour long conversation live with me to talk through all of those pieces, but also some of the pieces that are not going to be listed in the key takeaways where we can go a little bit deeper. Um, so I love doing those. And then I oftentimes have people that want to take it deeper than that. Obviously, yeah. once you open Pandora's box, you're like, wait a minute. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. More. Uh, I need to know how to leverage this. And again, like I said, not everyone is going to want to go down the rabbit holes that I have to learn yeah. the complexities of this system. So what I'm here to do is support the people who see the value in it and the benefit, yeah. how they can leverage this system without them having to learn those details. I've already learned them. So I can coach yeah. you through it. I can guide you through it. I can help you through those specific seasons of your life that are feeling really tough and challenging and give you context as to why those things are coming up in your life, how you yeah. can work through them. Um, and so I do, those are customized co coaching packages around that, but it is a precursor to get your chart read first. I love it. I love it. Now, with when when you talk about human design, what exactly is human design versus having a birth chart reading? So human design is a whole nother level of complex. Like quite frankly, if astrology is complex, just take that to the nth degree with human design. <laughs> Because astrology is one of the systems that human design is based on, but it's based on a lot of other systems that study our energy. So think like Kabbalah, the chakra system, Chinese I Ching, um, quantum yeah. physics. Like there's a lot of different layers of what makes up your human design chart, but essentially yeah. it's the study of your energetic body, essentially. And it's layering information from all of these different systems that study that in different ways and saying, hey, uh -huh. let's actually put all of these together and come up with a really nuanced picture of who you are energetically and how it's going to be, you know, most seamless, we'll say, uh -huh. for lack of a better word, for your energy to kind of flow in this mm -hmm. life. This is where it's going to want to go. And this yeah. is the way that it's going to want to be expressed versus the way that your energy is going to continue to run into resistance and roadblocks or feel drained or whatever it may be. And I think that because of that, astrology to me is a really incredible place to start, especially for self-discovery purposes and just understanding yeah. yourself. Mm -hmm. And then human design is a very tangible way to kind of have that practical application of, okay, I know myself a lot more but energetically, what does this mean when it comes to how to actually live a life that feels aligned? Yeah. Wow. I like that. That's a really, I like that it, that the human design one kind of takes a little bit of everything, you know, from all different types of energies, you know, so it really gives you more in-depth because it's looking at different areas and in, in a different way. So that's, that's really, that's like the next level intenseness. And then the third one is really like the, the major one when people really want to take it to the next level and, and even get more out of it. Like when you take it to the third level, like what are you doing differently, you know, versus the the human design you mean when I do the actual like the coaching with people yes mm -hmm. yeah so we're doing both we're talking about human design and birth chart when I do the coaching with people I would say nine times out of ten um, yeah. because it it helps when we're trying to adjust our behavior we're not just wanting to understand ourselves when I'm coaching people that's what's happening they're wanting to adjust something it's yes. not, it's not simply about self-discovery anymore. It's like, how can I, I, I actually start to take action to evolve in the direction that I want to? Right. And so 
that's what I'm helping them to do by understanding their charts more and specifically through examples oftentimes is what we do. Yeah. It's like we have these, again, we have usually a, a focus that we're working on with whatever season of life they're in or whatever thing feels like this lifelong challenge that they're trying to, you know, outgrow or whatever it may be, yeah. or maybe even embrace more. And right we're looking at the million different points of both of their charts that's going to yeah. support them in doing that. And usually we're also tying in the transits in real time, like I said, because at that point we have the foundational knowledge, we have the understanding already, and we can yeah. take it to the next level of, okay, this is who you are. You understand what that means. Now let's look at what's happening right now and why you're feeling called to actually do something about it in this season right. of your life. And how can we lean into that and take this opportunity to create lasting and profound change? I love it. I love it. Now, where can people go to find you so they can, you know, may inquire about getting their birth chart read or maybe even doing human design or doing both and, and really tapping into a deeper level of self-discovery and, and figuring out how what they how they can make changes in their life and really, you know, self-empower themselves. Yeah. So I think my website's the best place to do that. Just clairecampagna.com and the work with me page. If you just click any of the buttons on that page, it'll take you to the, the booking page to book any of these things. Um, and then my Instagram as well. I'm just posting things back to what you mentioned earlier. I'm posting things that are kind of relevant to the full moon and new moon transits every couple yeah. of weeks. So that can be a good place to just dip your toe in the water. Yeah. Um, it's linked on my website, but it's just Claire period Campania is my handle. And I think that's one where if you're just wanting to kind of start to understand what these things mean a little bit more, that's a good yeah. place to just do a little stalking on my Instagram and see, see what some of the, the recent full moons have brought up for you and maybe think of sp some specific examples in your life. Oh, I love it. Now, if you had to like challenge people, is there a challenge you'd maybe like to give out today, you know, for people who are out there listening to you? Is there something that, you know, pops into your head that, you know, you might want to say, hey, you know, I like to challenge you to. Yeah, ooh, that's a fun question. <laughs> I think just because of the topic of the conversation today and, and knowing that I once was somebody that uh, probably, you know, could have benefited from being challenged in this way. <laughs> I would challenge anyone listening who is like, yeah, that all sounds great. And my religion doesn't jive with this or my scientific way of viewing the world doesn't jive with this or fill in the blank, you know, mental objection to yeah. astrology. First of all, I have a post that speaks specifically to this. So scroll back and find that I have like the common criticisms of astrology and definitely look at that. But I think the the challenge would be to approach that wall that's presenting yeah. with curiosity. Is this actually my belief or was this planted in me? What do I fear is going to happen if I do find that there's validity to this when I get my chart read? You right. know, ask yourself those types of questions because I find that the the people that tend to be the loudest critics with this, when like, for example, when I started reading charts, a lot of my husband's charts, or my husband's, what? My friend's husband's, mm -hmm. <laughs> not, a lot of my husband's, no, a lot of my <laughs> friend's husband's, I would read their information and they would give me their, their information kind of jokingly, like expecting yeah. this to be a total joke. And I just, I'll never forget the faces that yeah. they would, like I'd leave them with just shock jaws dropped, you know, like, and I would always leave those conversations saying, don't give me your information if you don't want me to see you. Yeah. And Very. now they know, <laughs> you know, like whether they subscribe <laughs> to it or not, whether they're into it or not, though, I will say some of them have gotten into it. It's yeah. just funny because oftentimes the, the louder, the criticism it, it doesn't take long to poke holes through that because you realize it's not even you criticizing the system. It's somebody that told you that it wasn't valid or it's, you know, again, it's using this, seeing the systems used in the ways that like, in my opinion, just aren't very constructive. You know, pop yeah. astrology is often very doomsday focused. Yeah. And that's just not the way that I like to look at it. I, I find that a lot of times when I find people who are critical or, or they are cynical about it, 
is because someone told them in their past or how they were raised, you know, so it is that person or a group of people, you know, you know, implanting that. So when they grew up as adults, they were very cynical because of the background, their environment that they grew up in. For sure. That's definitely my experience too. They were, they were told that, or they read a couple horoscopes and either said, this doesn't land with me, or this could literally have applied to anybody. You could have written this about any person and it would have landed. Yeah. So, kind of like, you know, I, I think a lot of people have that feeling with like psychics and mediums and things like that. Right. It's like, I think that's always the challenge with these types of industries is there's always going to be that going on. And there's always going to be people who are going to be able to present something to you and, and give you something you can actually work with. And that's very specific. And you're like, you should have no idea about this, but right. you do, which happens every time I do a reading for someone I don't know. It's like, I don't know why you know that, but sure. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. I love it. I love it. I, well, I challenge everybody out there that, you know, if you're a little cynical or just a little curious to dive into it. And once again, tell everybody where they can find you so that if they want to dive into it, maybe they could look you up and you could help them and gear them along the way. I would love that. As somebody who was once a critic, it's very fun for me to do that. So clairecompagna.com is my website. And then my Instagram is claire.compagna. I love it. Thank you so much, Claire, for being on the show today. This was like a really fun conversation. I really think it's a, a great way. I think people don't realize that you could use astrology for empowerment and that it, it is a tool for self-discovery and a, also a tool to show you how you can make changes in your life according to what your sign, your birth sign is, according to what your energy is, how everything's aligned when you were born and everything. You're just taking everything to account, really looking into it and then and really being able to look, you know, just past, you know, the word astrology and really looking at it as a tool that you could actually base your, your, your life on and, and just, you know, focus on what the energies are that day. What's, what are you feeling? You know, what does your sign say? And then just going by that. It's, it's really, it's, it's really powerful. And it's, and for people who try it, you know, like it, it's just so on you know, on the dot, once you start doing it, it's like, wow, you know, and uh, yeah, so I definitely challenge people to take a look at it. And this has been great. Thank you so much, Claire, for being on this show today. I look forward to our future discussions. And uh, I definitely want to challenge people. If you want the feeling of empowerment, check it out, see what your astrology is, see what your chart says, and see what you can do to actually make those levels that you want to elevate to in your personal and in your, in your business and career life too. Well, thank you, Claire. This has been great. Thank you. I always love these conversations and yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to more. <laughs> yes, me too. Have a great day. Thank you.